Thank you so much. I will just quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Faisal Luck. I'm a computer science student, and um, yeah, I'm glad to be working with this amazing team, which I'll introduce itself. Hi, my name is Dalia Naul. I'm a junior in sociology and environmental studies. Hi, I'm Jake Hiller. Uh, I'm a senior chemistry major, uh, also doing pursuing certificates in, in environmental studies and sustainable energy. I'm Fahad Shams, and I'm a second in Austin in the finance field. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. Uh, I'm a senior in the mobile bio department. Can, can you hear? I hate these. <laughs> you sound evil. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Good. Start. Sure. So I want you to picture a community of 2,000 people living on a landfill where 3,000 tons of urban garbage are dumped every day. <coughs> To make a living, they search through garbage, looking for recyclables, and they burn away all of the organic waste to make their tasks easier, causing grave health problems. This is Kashar Kandi in Karachi, Pakistan, a place that epitomizes the waste of valuable resources in landfill slums throughout the world. So, Kashar Kandi is located on the outskirts of Karachi, Pakistan, which is a huge city of 18 million people. Um, the people on this landfill live in shanty dwellings. Um, and basically what we want to address on this um, pilot site um, is the problem of landfill slums, which occurs throughout the world. Um, this problem has two underlying problems. One of the problems is severe poverty, which manifests itself in low margin inefficient work, um, a small amount of opportunities, limited educational resources, um, and the second problem is urban waste. Um, overflow. So urban waste overflow um, contributes huge in a huge way um, to um, climate change. Um, it also, as I mentioned before, um, contributes to grave health problems on this site. Um, and this is this is uh, exacerbated by the burning of organic waste on this site. So this last challenge actually becomes the first input into empowers equation of change. So it's a huge um, unutilized resource, uh, organic waste that is dumped um, at the landfill site and it's just burned away because workers lack the requisite skills um, or resources to utilize this resource. Um, previously, large corporations have tried to come on site and use uh, the waste to produce electricity, but have failed because they tried to evict the community first. And that actually led to violence. Um, so Empower's model is fundamentally different. We use uh, this huge, huge unutilized resource, which is uh, organic waste, and combine that with inexpensive, proven biogas technology to produce methane. And that methane we use to produce electricity. But instead of evicting the community, uh, we use this electricity to empower them, to empower the workers on site to become agents of positive change in their own surroundings. Uh, I was working on site um, the last year and I met these kids who wouldn't go to school in the morning because uh, the school was at capacity, the school that is on site um, and which is actually our main partner in this endeavor. Um, and that's the capacity, so they would just run around, um, play on the trash because that's their playground and um, you know, run around barefoot on the shards of glass and not even wince. And I would wince for them. Um, and then, you know, uh, these, the wounds that would, they would get hair would complicate drastically, very quickly, because the health clinics sometimes won't be uh, able to store medicines or vaccines on site. So, you know, we use this electricity um, to power up the school and the health clinic, uh, thereby increasing their capacity and capability. So the school, for example, uh, can now have evening shifts, uh, thereby catering to more students on site, and the health clinic can, for example, have a fridge which can store medicines um, and vaccines on site. Um, but this is not the end. We want this project to be sustainable, to be self-sustaining. We, we, we don't want it to rely continuously on aid. So this electricity actually becomes the nucleus uh, for a host of value-added community-owned businesses um, that introduce new monetary and social value in the community. Uh, these businesses include um, compost production uh, and you know producing upcycled products at the site and an outdoor cinema and agriculture and food sales. These all work under an integrated co-op model um, that J-Care will talk more about. Yeah, so as Fai has described, uh, 
Empower seeks to be kind of an umbrella organization for a large number of community-owned businesses. Um, but how exactly will this work? Uh, so this is a diagram of the few acres immediately surrounding the existing school and health clinic uh, located on Kachukundi. Um, so the best way to understand this is to follow the waste. You st we start over at the recyclable sorting plant, where waste is taken directly from the landfill, mixed waste, both recyclables and organic, about 40% organic, and it's taken into our recyclable sorting plant where a number of employees um, employed by our co-op will sort out the organic waste from the recyclables. The recyclables will be sold to wholesalers just like they're being done now. But instead of throwing away the organic waste, it'll now be moved into our biodigester. Now what is a biodigester? Basically, it's a very large concrete tank built underground where organic waste and water are mixed, sealed, and allowed to ferment in order to create methane. There are two main outputs from a biodigester. One is the methane that goes out the top through the pipe. The other is a very highly nutrient-rich sludge, which comes out the bottom of the tank. So we'll follow the two outputs to understand how we're going to gain um, economic value from both of these. First, the methane can go directly to a methane generator, where electricity is produced in order to power the school, the health clinic, and the, new, the other new businesses that uh, Fai has outlined. Then, the high, highly nutrient-rich sludge can be moved to an adjacent tank where it can be mixed with additional organic waste in order to create high-quality compost. Now, currently, the school offers lunches to all of its students every day, but it has to bring in this food from off-site. It's expensive, and it's really not the most environmentally friendly perspective. We believe that we can create an on-site agricultural area where we can use this high-quality compost in addition to cheap building materials to build a, a raised bed in order to, um, to, to produce local fresh produce for this school and uh, therefore supply this need. Startup funds for this project are low. $10,000 will give us enough money to build the biodigester, buy our 5 kVA uh, methane generator, provide wiring for the school, the health clinic, and the other new businesses, and the building materials for our agricultural site. This will allow us to form these community-owned businesses. They can hire employees directly from the existing community. The school and the health clinic have already agreed to purchase the electricity and the food from our co-op, providing our initial revenue stream. From this revenue, we'll be able to pay all of our employees a fixed wage that's higher than they're currently making scavenging on the landfill. Additionally, out of all the excess revenue that we'll generate, which we've calculated will be plenty, uh, we will redistribute this back to the workers in a mixture of wage bonuses based on performance, how well they're doing, how much value they're producing for the co-op, in addition to shares in the, in, the, um, in the cooperative. This will allow for two things. One, it'll allow the community to buy into our venture. And two, uh, it will allow us to repay the initial $10,000 investment. Once this, is, this investment has been paid off, uh, the community, the cooperative will be 100% community owned, and our group will be able to reinvest that $10,000 in phase two, which Baha'i will talk about a little more fully. Okay, so our project will be implemented in three phases, and with each successive phase, uh, we'll get it an increasingly larger market. In phase one, we'll be providing electricity to the on-site school, the health clinic, uh, and our community-owned businesses. And as Jake mentioned, We'll be generating revenues by selling the products of these businesses to consumers in Karachi and potentially other areas of Pakistan and abroad. And a portion of these revenues would go towards investing in phase two of our plan. In phase two, we'll be scaling up our power plant and we'll be providing electricity to a majority of the residents of Kachra Kundi, which is roughly 2,000 individuals of 400 households. Uh, we'll be selling the electricity at a very subsidized, affordable price. And finally, in phase three, uh, using the profits that we've made till date, and with an extra round of funding, uh, we'll scale up even more, uh, and we'll get into the larger market of Karachi city by selling electricity to the grid. I was in Karachi this past summer, and the city is facing a severe energy deficit. There were blackouts all the time, and there's definitely a need for this. So a quick overview of our team. Uh, Empower is a group of 100 plus uh, Princeton and Rutgers undergraduate and graduate students, and we here represent the core team. Uh, our core team has an eclectic set of academic interests, which include environmental science, engineering, sociology, and finance. Uh, we believe the diversity and relevance of our areas of study will definitely uh, prove to be a great asset during the course of this project. Plus, 
uh, we have two Pakistanis on our team, which will help us understand the cultural and political context. And last but not the least, Faiz here has already worked on site and has developed a thorough understanding of the ground realities and has built local partnerships. Uh, we realize that we need help. Uh, so in order to ensure our project success, we formed a meaningful partnership with EcoComplex, which is Rutgers University's Environmental Research Center, which focuses on projects related to waste management and renewable energy. Plus, we're seeking advice from a range of esteemed experts within academia, which include Candice Chandra, who is an expert in waste management at the Woodrow Wilson School there. In Pakistan, we formed a partnership with the well-known uh, Ackerman Fund, and we're looking to partner with uh, the city government in Karachi. And most importantly, on site, we made local uh, close connections with uh, Al Qaeda Foundation, which is running the on-site school and health clinic, and which will help us build the infrastructure for our community-owned businesses and will provide us with the necessary human capital. Um, this foundation is highly respected by the local community and the landlords. Uh, so this will help us gain community support, which is crucial for the success of this project. All right, so there's obviously some challenges because if this uh, proposal were easy, it'd already be done. Uh, as far as we consider some of our problems we may be facing in the future, the first one is resource competition. Right now, the organic materials, they're not doing anything with them. If we go in there and start making money off of it, who's to say someone else isn't going to do the same? Our second problem is the community buy-in. It's essential to our project to have the community support us within our endeavors. Without their support, we don't exist. Our third problem is theft and corruption. Obviously, this is a disadvantaged community, and anything of value could can potentially be a problem. But I think you'll find out that our competitive advantages do a pretty good job of blowing these out of the water. Our first one is our community connection. Faiz here has the gold stamp of approval from this group that's been there since 1983, working on site without electricity. They want us to come. They're excited for us to come. When we arrive on site, we're not the crazies coming from elsewhere. We're the people that are there helping the community with the community. Our second big advantage is our scalability. This is something that we can make bigger, we can make better, and Karachi needs electricity, so we can actually turn this into real cash inflow. Our third advantage is really, I think, the most important, other than the community, and that's our technology. It's easy, it's quick, it's efficient, it exists. If you go to Home Depot and you buy yourself a generator, that uses gasoline. You put an adapter on that, you pump methane in it, and shazam, you've got electricity. That's what we're using. That's why our starter costs are so low, and with $10,000, we can start a pilot, not tomorrow because we have to finish the semester, but by the end of the year for sure. I'm serious. My mom is like, no way you're going to Pakistan. Uh, she actually said that. Um, if, if I can really leave you with one thing to really take out of this idea is that we're taking trash, we're turning it to gas. We take the gas, we make electricity, and we take the electricity and we turn it into cash. $10,000 were on the ground, and I'm excited, we're excited, and we hope you guys are excited too.